Welcome to Ultimate Motorcycling Weekly, where we feature the latest on new motorcycles, classic motorbikes, motorcycle accessories, parts, apparel, events, travel, and touring. Our editorial team of passionate motorcycle aficionados has been hard at work so we can bring you the events, news, and reviews that you're looking for. In this episode, we take a look at the Indian motorcycle schedule for the 2016 Sturgis Rally, along with a review of the 2016 Yamaha XSR 900, our product of the week is GB's Trekker Dolomiti side cases, and we're going to wrap the show up with a bike review on the traction gaining 2016 Harley Davidson Roadster. And this is one sporty sportster. First up, Sturgis. Now, the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally is by far one of the most iconic bike events in the USA. But with all the hustle and bustle, it's easy to get lost in the excitement, missing out on some of the great events. Indian Motorcycle has just announced its itinerary for the 76th annual Sturgis Motorcycle Rally which runs August 8th to 14th in Sturgis, South Dakota. If you're unfamiliar with the history of Sturgis, you might not be aware that the Indian motorcycle has been there since the beginning. It all started in 1938 when J.C. Pappy Hole, owner and operator of an Indian dealer, opened up the back lot of his dealership to the public and formed what is now known today as the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. All the action kicks off on August 6th, and if you'd like to get some seat time on any of Indian's new models, demo rides of the Indian Scout 60, Indian Chieftain Dark Horse, and Indian Springfield will be available. Indian has put together a massive amount of activities. We're going to tell you about some of them, but all of them can be found at IndianMotorcycleSturgis.com. Sunday, August 7th, between concert sets at the legendary Sturgis Buffalo Chip, Indian Motorcycle will make history as they unveil the all-new Indian FTR 750. This is a purpose-built flat-track bike sporting a proprietary liquid-cooled 750cc four-valve V-twin competition engine engineered into a specifically built chassis. This historic and awe-inspiring new race bike will be on display at the Indian Motorcycle Lazelle Street location at the Sturgis Speedway throughout the remainder of the rally. Tuesday, August 9th at the Full Throttle Saloon, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you might want to enter the Baddest Bagger Contest. Join fellow bagger enthusiasts, including guest judge Carrie Hart and other celebrity motorcyclists to explore the full customization potential of baggers with many unique customs from across the country, including the Az Kicker Frontier 111 and many more custom Indians. Racing fans, listen up. Wednesday, August 10th, 4 p.m., it's Back to Buffalo Chip where you can join fellow racing enthusiasts and music fans for a special Indian motorcycle night. Indian Motorcycle and Roland Sand Super Hooligan Racing take over the Buffalo Chip turning it into a racetrack with Super Hooligan Indian Scout 60 racers for an epic race with special guest racer, Carrie Hart. Following the excitement, National Recording Acts Reverend Horton Heat and Five Finger Death Punch will take the main stage for the evening's entertainment. That's just a couple things going on at the 76th Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. There's so much more in store for you at Sturgis and in the show. We still have the Yamaha XSR 900, GV Trekkers, and we review the 2016 Harley Sportster, so stick around, we'll be right back. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. Kaito Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Swing and a miss. Welcome back to Ultimate Motorcycling Weekly. Are you looking for unbiased motorcycle reviews featuring sport bikes from Ducati, Yamaha, Suzuki, Kawasaki, Honda, MV Augusta, Aprilia, EBR Motorcycles, and others? Well, we've got you covered. Everything that you see here on Ultimate Motorcycling Weekly is also available on our website where we have all the details including specs, photos, additional pricing, even a section called Riding Style where we have links to each piece of motorcycle apparel used on that ride. You might quickly dismiss the 2016 Yamaha XSR900 as nothing more than restyled Yamaha FZ09. Well, it certainly is that, there are also substantial functional and technical differences that make them two distinct motorcycles. 
This ride review and test will tell you exactly what Yamaha did to transform the FZ09 into the new 2016 Yamaha XSR900. For starters, the Yamaha XSR900 gets traction control, not available in the Pure Sport FZ09 even as an option. Traction control with three functional choices, maximum TCS2, minimal TCS1, none TCS off is standard on the XSR900. Next up is the new clutch. We've been seeing a lot of the new assist and slipper clutch technology. Basically, instead of relying wholly on springs to keep your clutch plates together when you're riding around, the assist technology uses the torque of the engine to help prevent the plates slipping. This allows the XSR900's clutch to have three springs rather than six in the FC09, which Yamaha claims will give you 20% reduction in clutch pull effort. From the clutch, we go to the brakes, and ABS is standard on the 2016 Yamaha XSR900. You won't find ABS on the FC09, but electronically controlled ABS, separate for front and rear, is part of the XSR900 package. If you live somewhere that is often wet, that can be a lifesaver. When it comes to the suspension, Yamaha reworked the suspension settings when converting the FC09 into the XSR900. The big news is that Yamaha significantly increased the dampening for the 41mm inverted KYB forks and linkage assist KYB shock on the XSR900 compared to the FC09. Additionally, the XSR900's fork springs are dual rate compared to the single rate springs on the FC09 and the spring length at both ends of the XSR900 are longer. Yamaha says they increased the dampening to make the bike feel more stable and our test riders tell us that it does just that. The new seat on the 2016 Yamaha XSR900 is not just a cosmetic change. The flat, wide seat on the XSR900 also changes the riding position. While Yamaha didn't move the foot pegs or grips, the seat sits over a half inch higher and almost two inches farther back. This changes the FC09's almost supermoto-like seating position into a more traditional, naturally sporting position. The bars and foot pegs sit lower and farther forward. This gives you a bit more of an aggressive look on the bike, which fits in with the intended visual presentation of the XSR900 and its rider. Yamaha did a great job integrating the XSR styling throughout the bike. The big focus is on circles. The headlight, taillight, and instrument pod are all round. There are round holes in the sweet aluminum headlight bracket, along with the function-free aluminum side covers near the back of the seat. Aluminum also shows up in the front fender mounting bracket, which looks quite impressive in person. Ultimate Motorcycling Magazine editor Don Williams wrote a review on the XSR900 and here's what he had to say. Riding the 2016 Yamaha XSR900 is a blast. Even more than the FZ09, which is great fun, the XSR900 encourages that old time hooliganism. I'm not a wheelie guy, but I was lifting the front end at will. In fact, the torque from the 847cc's triple is so impressive that I inadvertently carried a long, low altitude, fully in control wheelie when coming out of an uphill corner. My riding buddies were doing all sort of crazy stoppies, and the XSR900 just eggs you on from the moment you fire it up. If you think the XSR900 looks like fun, just wait until you ride it. The XSR900 comes in at 9490, which means Yamaha is getting an additional 1300 for the standard XSR900 over the FC09. If you don't like the sports heritage looks, then it's a non-starter. Go with the FC09. However, if you like the technical upgrades, then you would be hard pressed to pass up the 2016 XSR900. For more on this review, visit ultimatemotorcycling.com under sport reviews. We'll be right back. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. Geico Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. Swing in a minute. Our product of the week is GV's Trekker Dolomiti side cases. GV USA has just announced that their new side cases are available for purchase stateside. GV is well known for its luggage and accessories, and this is just another fine addition to its bustling lineup. Oftentimes, when purchasing a new set of side cases, you'll need a spring for matching mounting system, but the new DLM36 Trekker Dolomiti make use of the tried and true PL and PLR monokey mounting systems. 
So, if you're already a happy GV customer, you'll be able to use your existing mounts. Also included is a third lock cylinder to match any existing GV top case lock, along with two adapters to convert PL and PLR mounts so they can be used with the Dolomiti. If your cases have seen better days or suffered some damage over the years, these may be the bags you're looking for. The aluminum Dolomiti cases have a current MSRP of 700 and are available to US customers now. The key features include ample amount of space, 36 liters to be exact, hybrid die stamping, and single sheet construction, lightweight, secure, rugged, and waterproof aluminum construction, fully removable lids, automotive derived GV security locks, and integrated loops for straps and cargo nets. If you'd like to purchase a set of Trekker Dolomiti side cases, please visit GV USA for more information. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. And I told motorcycle, great rates for great rides. Swing and a miss. Let's take a look at a motorcycle that's gaining traction, the 2016 Harley-Davidson Sportster Roadster. Some have described this bike as a millennial marketer's dream, but we think there's more to it than that. Starting up any Harley-Davidson is an exercise in expectation building. The explosive cacophony and dancing of the motor stirs the blood, and the Roadster is no exception. As the 1202cc's evolution motor growls to life, it gives you an inclination of why the Sportster line is quickly gaining market traction. When it comes to riding position, you will notice that yes, the air filter is still in the way, which means you will have a bow legged and a bit of a lean forward riding position. As you become acclimated to the Roadster, the gently slight forward lean will begin to feel natural for most of us, and you might even approve of the mid position pegs. The brawny torque runs from 2000 RPM up to the red line of 6000 RPM. Yes, the Roadster has a prominent analog tachometer, so dialing in the right speed requires little effort. Now, while the power band of 2000 to 6000 sounds good, there is a caveat. Although the rubber mounted Evolution motor is smooth from 2000 to 4000 RPM, like clockwork, as the tack hits 4000, serious vibrations start coming through the pegs. The more you rev, the more your feet are going to be punished, and by the time the rev limiter kicks in, your feet are crying for mercy. Short shift and your feet will thank you. Here's what really makes the Roadster work. The front end. The combination of the fat 19 inch Dunlop tire, no flex 43 millimeter inverted forks and high leverage bars gives plenty of confidence in the twisties. It seems that the cafe look is more than just about styling. This is a sportster that hasn't forgotten that sport is in the name of the line. In addition to the good feeling the Harley Davidson Roadster's front end gives you in the corners, there's also the confidence distributed by the twin disc brakes. While they aren't going to cause any inadvertent stoppies, they definitely make deceleration happen. Cornering clearance is pretty good at over 30 degrees on both sides. With a fork angle of 27.4 degrees and a wheelbase over 59 inches, not to mention a curb weight of 586 pounds, the 2016 Harley-Davidson Sportster Roadster approaches cornering from a position of stability. We found that the Roadster is fun to ride, but you should ride to its strengths, not its weaknesses. Use corner speed rather than braking hard, abruptly changing direction, and then getting hard on the gas. Instead, pick up a good line, move through a good pace, and get on the gas early. Harley-Davidson put the new upgraded Sportster suspension on the Roadster, and it shows. The 43mm cartridge forks, lacking any sort of flex and held by impressively beefy triple clamps, work smoothly, and the 4.5 inches of travel are well regulated. The suspension at both ends does a good job of handling road irregularities on back roads, either in a straight line or a corner. The Roadster has a rackish look of the sport bike mixed with the classic seriously bob styling around a big air-cooled pushrod V-twin with suitable touches like the small blacked out mirrors and a side mounted license plate. The Roadster looks like what a lot of people think a motorcycle should look like and that comes from a heritage that dates back to the iconic 1957 Harley-Davidson XL Sportster. Ultimate Motorcycling Magazine editor Don Williams conducted the review on this Sportster and here's what he had to say. When Harley-Davidson discontinued the XR1200X, there weren't a lot of mourners, even though many had been begging for the bike. This was a bike that promised a lot more sport than the Sportster delivered, and I always felt disappointed riding it. The 2016 Harley-Davidson Sportster Roadster does exactly the opposite. 
and this is a sporty roadster that we really want. It's a bike that looks like a millennial marketer's dream, but it's actually a motorcycle that works great. The Roadster is fun to ride in the city and on back roads, as well as a freeway, and it represents well on the boulevard as a brilliantly conceived package. For more on Don's review of the 2016 Harley-Davidson Roadster Sportster, visit UltimateMotorcycling.com and look for it under Cruiser Reviews. Speaking of more, you'll want to stick around. We'll be right back. So, how fast does this thing go? Depends on who's in the sidecar. It's pretty comfortable in there. Let's go for a ride. All right. Definitely misread this one. And I told Motorcycle, great rates for great rides. Swing and a miss. That's it for this edition of Ultimate Motorcycling Weekly, where we took a look at the Indian motorcycle itinerary for the upcoming 76 Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. We dove into the Yamaha's XSR 900 review, caught a glimpse of the recent release to the US GV Trekker side cases, and we got sporty with the 2016 Harley-Davidson Roadster Sportster. We want to remind you that you can get more details on everything we featured in this show and even more products, news, and reviews at UltimateMotorcycling.com. While you're there, download the latest issue of Ultimate Motorcycling Magazine that features the KTM 1290 Super Duke GT on the cover. In addition to the Super Duke review, we also cover the Yamaha FJR 1300ES, Ducati 959 Panigale, the Triumph Thruxton R, the Bonneville T120, Moto Guzzi V9 Roamer and Bobber, and the Harley-Davidson Lowrider S. Yes, all of those motorcycles in one issue. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, and Dig. Or make it easy on yourself and let us send the information to you directly twice a month by signing up for our newsletter. That link is located at the top of our homepage. Thanks for joining us. I'm Joseph Porter for Motorcycle News, reviews, interviews, accessories, apparel, and destinations. Keep coming right back here to Ultimate Motorcycling Weekly. Cheers and keep the rubber side down. <laughs>